So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a drawing from your sketchbook and convert it into a uh, more highly realized sketch um, for concept art or something that uh, you might want to show to a client. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is open up Photoshop and I'm going to be going into a folder that already have selected here. It's uh, called Art Design for Scans and there are a bunch of pages that I scanned from one of my sketchbooks. Uh, we're going to select this one here. It's called uh, CA08. CA is for Concept Art. And what we have here is a very um, simple drawing of a character and what I'm going to be doing is showing you in a, a few short steps how we can take this sketch and convert it to something that uh, you might want to show to a client be it in um, a game design or an animation concept or a book concepts or whatever. Anyway, so we have our um, drawing open and enlarge a little bit and you can see we have here that further. You can see it's a very rough um, sketch. It's not even, hasn't even been cleaned up yet and we're going to leave it in this state because we're not really concerned with having a highly polished finished piece of art. What, um, what we want here is just to show something very um, spontaneous and uh, well designed. Anyway, so here we have our black and white pencil sketch and the first thing I'm going to do is convert it to a uh, more brownish color. The end effect what we're trying to achieve here is to have um, sort of like a sanguine chalk drawing on charcoal paper, the kind of thing that you might have done in um, uh, figure drawing when you were a student uh, or when you were an earlier student. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer. And I always duplicate the background layer because I, I, I like to have the original art um, still uh, within the file in case I ever need to go back to it. Um, usually uh, you don't, but and um, I, just for safety's sake, I like to have it. Anyway, um, so we have the background copy uh, here in our layers palette. So I'm going to go into image and I'm going to go to adjust and the first thing I'm going to do is go into color balance. All right, so we have a dialog box here and it has um, three sliders going from uh, cyan to red, magenta to green, yellow to blue, and we also have down here on the bottom um, a couple of um, some boxes for uh, shadows, uh, mid-tones, and highlights. Uh, mid-tones are the default um, that Photoshop has for this. Um, and we have the preserve luminosity uh, box checked. So we're going to leave that checked. And, and what we're going to do is we're also going to ignore highlights because uh, you're going to see in a few minutes that what tends to happen is when we start playing with these sliders, it's going to change the color of the uh, gray lines. So um, I don't want to change the color of the white, the higher, the highlights. So what I really just want to be concerned about is the, the, the gray. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to stay in mid-tones. And if we slide um, the top slider over towards the red, maybe it's uh, all the way over. Um, but really, this is a matter of just um, seeing how it's drawing uh, to the yellow. There we go. It's pretty yellow. I'm going to go into the shadow option and we're going to do the same thing. I, I'm not going to go all the way over with the red because I don't want it to be too red. So we'll go about a little beyond the midway point, a little bit more in the yellow, uh, some green, and maybe a little teeny bit more red. And I'm going to click OK. As you can see, in a uh, short period of time, we've managed to convert our pencil drawing into that effect that we usually have. Similarly, 
of a uh, red satin drawing of the story. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a black layer. So I have a tapestry layer here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to create uh, something that's going to resemble charcoal paper. I'm going to check this layer off for now. Uh, so I'm going to go into the um, color picker and I'm going to try to come up with a beige color since it's a mix um, what we see on charcoal paper. So I want to go to dark and I want to go to light. Uh, it's going to change later on, but um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to select this beige color here and I'm going to go over to the paint bucket tool and it's going to fill this layer completely with that color. The next thing we're going to do is go into filter. We're going to go into filter noise and we're going to go into add noise. Now um, I've already got it in the um, uh, adjustment box here. I have my amount set to 1.51. Uh, anything um, below a uh, around 9 or 10 percent is uh, good for the purposes that we have here. All we really want to do is break up that solid color. So uh, you'll notice also in the distribution box I have uh, Gaussian set at unity and, and I've also got the monochromatic uh, option selected. Now um, this document, this original document is 200 dpi approximately uh, 8.5 by 11 so these numbers here are just about right for the document that we're working on. So I'm going to click OK and now we have our noise set but it's it's still for, for um, the purposes of this I feel it's a little bit too uh, computerized, computer, uh, too sharp. So one final thing we're going to do when we separate the piece of paper <coughs> excuse me, is to go into the filter and blur and the next thing we're going to do is go into the Gaussian blur. <coughs> we're going to change our radius to approximately uh, 0.9, 0.81. Any of that is just about right for what we're trying to do. Uh, you can see over here that what it did was it blurred that noise a bit. I'm going to click OK. So now what we have here is a reasonable facsimile of charcoal paper. I'm going to go back to the layer that we're working on and turn that layer back on. And we're going to go into the blending mode and we're going to go into multiply. Um, so now we're in multiply. So I'm going to go back, shut that off, go back to normal. And uh, now we're in the proper layer. Multiply, and here we go. We have our drawing of red chalk drawn on charcoal paper. So that's a um, pretty big difference right there from the original pencil sketch from the sketchbook. Uh, but we're going to just take it a little bit further than um, what we see here in front of us. So the next thing we're going to do is start picking out some of the highlights. Like I said, this is more of the a highly defined uh, drawing. What we're going to do is just um, something that you can call upon to give them an idea of the direction and physicality of what we're going to design and what they're going to look like. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, we'll go back into the color picker. I don't want to go with a purely white chalk. Um, I think that um, it's a little harsh get something really close to white that's too much a little bit too much so I think this is a good color that we can go with right now and the next option we're going to go is to um, select brush so the brush tool is now selected and we're going to uh, select the brush now the thing about Photoshop is you pick many uh, different brush choices and uh, what I'm going to select uh, now is a brush that resembles chalk. You can see when I put the cursor over the, that number 36, it says chalk. So I'm going to select uh, that brush. And uh, as 
also was saying before, this, is, this comes with Photoshop uh, control practices. So nothing here to create, nothing to buy. Uh, it already comes with it. You'll also see that it's set at 36 pixels. Uh, that's a bit small for um, what we're going to be using now. So I'm going to just uh, increase the size of uh, the brush. Okay, so this is uh, great. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to quickly add this bit of the map. I'm not sure exactly if it works, but I'm going now to bring the map to the brush. And we're going to start, oh, uh, before we go any further than this, uh, I want to make sure that our opacity level is set much lower. In order to mimic the feel and look of chalk, um, I want to do a slow build up of the white color. So I've got the chalk now set to about 30. The flow I'm going to leave where it is. And the next step is I'm going to create a black layer. So we have another layer here and uh, I'm going to uh, change the blending mode to overlay. And what you're going to see in this tutorial is when we're um, creating layers that have a lighter color in them, you create the effect of, of, of a lighter color, you want to keep your blending mode to overlay. And when you want to um, use darker, more intense colors, you would put your uh, blending mode to overlay. So as I was saying, we have the overlay selected, we have our brush, it's at 30% opacity. So now I'm just going to start picking out some areas on the drawing that I want to pop a bit. Um, you can see, I'm not trying to color in this drawing, I think it's horrible. Um, I'm just trying to <coughs> very roughly lay in some highlights drawing itself and then actually uh, picking out a few things and then coming back to it. And you can see as I go over and over with the chalk, it becomes much, much faster that way. Like I said, I'm not concerned with staying in the lines. What I'm concerned with is just uh, building form. And uh, right now, like I said, it's... Uh, If it was something that um, uh, that was glaringly uh, wrong with it, all we would need to do is go in and edit it. So let's go ahead and select that and go back. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the end. Uh, I'm going to go out a little bit further. So um, as you can see, this is the first layer. And um, I began to pop uh, some white. I'm going to create another layer now. And it's basically uh, another layer, um, empty layer, and I'm going to go once again to overlay. And I'm not going to change the color of the chalk. What I'm doing is I'm building up another uh, highlight layer. And this time I'm more concerned with um, uh, light and where the light is hitting our subject. And so 
what I'm going to do is I figure it should be here towards the front and uh, maybe this on the right hand side. And uh, like I said, it's could be changed, but that's all interest. Um, just trying to leave the viewer's eyes um, to the part of the drawing that is more important to the viewer. So you can see here that I've begun to build up some areas much, much, much better. said before, the beauty of uh, Photoshop is its ability to create any, many layers, and that really gives you a lot of control over um, your dimension. And so it gives you control of the if you make mistakes, um, it's so easy to just go back and change the mistakes you have created. So. said, what we're trying to do is pick out the areas of the drawing that I believe the highlights should hit. So I can just see what the drawing is going to look like. And you see it's uh, uh, already looking pretty uh, good. The dimensions are looking very three-dimensional. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just try to put a little bit more information. Like I said, this is not supposed to be um, finished illustrations. Uh, it's just meant to show some information for the client. So uh, another thing that's important uh, for this character would be um, the color of his hair. So um, in keeping with uh, the original ideas behind character where he has red hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another uh, blank layer and I'm going to go back to uh, overlay. So that layer is overlay. And I'm going to select treatable uh, red for uh, the character's hair. And once again, I'm selecting, so I'm using the same chalk, the same brush. I'm going to just quickly saying before, um, we don't want to saturate the drawing with a lot of color. What we're just trying to do is um, give some visual information so that the client has an idea of where you're going with your character. And you've got enough an idea what the color of his hair is going to be. Um, I'm going to put another piece of information in on this drawing in a minute, but um, what I want to do is I, I he, he's looking very white, and I don't want him to look quite so uh, dead, and uh, I don't want to start over-coloring this drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another layer, and once again, I'm going to go into the um, overlay or the blend mode. And I'm just going to put a little blush in on the flesh. So I'm going to put in the blush color. Once again, I'm going to stay with the same brush, but I'm going to stay with the um, uh, the same opacity of approximately 30. And I'm just going to start putting a little bit of color into the brush's cheek. I'm going to put on his nose. Basically, the areas of the figure that would uh, warm him up a little bit. So I have a full-on color. A little bit on the on the hands, especially on the fingertips. Uh, maybe those are areas where you could see uh, the 
this color and I can make it not the dark or the flesh but this color just to give it a little bit of light um, one more uh, piece of information that I would like to include on this page that you can finish this drawing is uh, I want to work a little bit more on the dyes um, one thing that's the focus on want the viewer to to focus here just a little bit not I don't want to go overboard with this so I'm going to create another layer and um, once more in this layer what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to select a white and what I want to do is and I'll just call it overlay blend what I want to do is make his eyes look a little bit in much more detail so I can go to the point where I'm saying I want you to see what I'm doing today and go into the white so that your eyes I'm not making them um, pure white because I don't want them to be like the uh, Chinese palette that that I poured in my shadow but I just want to uh, to draw a little bit of attention to it so I'm adding some white and the next thing I'm going to do is add some color to the eye itself and select it with green and I'm not going to put this on another layer because there's so much uh, so little information in this layer I'm just gonna stay in here and I'm going to enjoyed this tutorial and, and uh, hope to create another piece.